Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for his unspeakable gift. Thank God for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts. Thank God for the gift of life that he gave unto us through his son, Jesus Christ. We honor him. We praise him tonight. We bless the Lord for all his many blessings stored upon us. We're grateful to the Lord that he allowed us to come to this moment in life that we can get ready to embrace a new year as we close out this year. But I just believe God is still working miracles in our midst. And we continue to pray much for all the saints of God who deal with these physical challenges, emotional challenges, spiritual challenges, decisions, all kinds of things. We're praying that, amen, that we will tie in, we will just tap in to the mind of God and, and understand that he come to cleanse our conscience from dead works to serving the living God. Amen. I think it was Jeremiah the prophet said, the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the everlasting King. Praise God. And so we thank the Lord that we serve an awesome God. He promised he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And we must trust in him at all times, the psalmist said. So we bring greetings tonight from my Bible study in the name of the Lord. And we want to encourage you. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss our watch night. Amen. It was scheduled to start at 10, but we're going to start at 1030. And I'm telling you, I'm believing the Lord. Amen. For an outpouring of fresh anointing of his Holy Spirit. I believe in the Lord, you know, just, just, you know, just go through the place like never before. But signs and wonders, I, I'm just believing the Lord will manifest his glory in our midst. And you come with expectation. I want you to come expecting the Lord, amen, to do wonderful things and just manifest his spirit, his anointing in your life. Amen. As we come together, we close out the year in, in prayer. And I believe in the power of unity in prayer and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I believe we just, you know, one accord before the Lord. Set aside issues, set aside different things and say, Lord, here we are. We're emptying ourselves before thee. Just believing you. Hallelujah for fresh anointing, fresh oil. Amen. And raising up those who are just going through these physical challenges, touching their physical bodies. You know, the Bible said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's what the scripture says. He never changes. Hebrews 6 says he's immutable. He's unchangeable. Amen. So if God, and, and we know and we believe that the Lord is the same, as, as the prophet said, you know, uh, you know, our Lord is the true God. He's the living God. Huh. He's the everlasting king. And one song, the song, I think, Psalm 103, and he said, I will bless the Lord, what? Oh, my soul. And all that within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, for getting out all his benefits toward me. He, hallelujah. He said, who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? And who healeth all thine diseases? And again, the prophet Jeremiah says this, I think in Jeremiah 17, 14, he said, heal me, O oh Lord, heal me from the physical, the, the, the spiritual, the mental, and psychological, whatever the situation is. I believe God still has the healing power. Amen. And he said, I shall be healed. Glory to God. Save me and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. And so we thank the Lord tonight. We just believe in God for fresh oil that's coming in. Believe in God for outpouring all. Amen. And we've been talking about the greatness and the graciousness and, and just the, you know, the, grac the graciousness of God, the, the gratefulness of him. I mean, he's just been so great and gracious and just gratefulness of him, just adoring him on this year. Amen. And just thanking him for his, just his awesomeness how he kept us, that many have survived the pandemic and have been providing, we're still here. 
And I've learned this one thing. To be grateful for the moment. Thanking God for the moment that he has given unto us. Amen. Bring us into the body of Christ. Amen. Christ is the head. And we are part of that body. In all different walks of life. All different ethnic groups. He put one body. And that's Christ. And he put all things under his feet. And glory to God. And so we are so thankful today. And I just believe in God going to raise those who are struggling up. Open, touch eyes, touch bodies. Renew strength. Those who are shut in, amen. I just believe God can restore vigor. And I believe in the Lord for it. And praying and just believing God, thanking him for who he is. And so let's pray. We're going to get right into the word of God. But I tell you, I'm looking forward to, to Saturday because we close out this year. I'm looking forward. And I want you to be there. Bring someone with you. Let's close out the year with our need. With all that's going on in the world, young folk dying around us, gun, gun violence, so many other things. If any time we, the church, need to pray, because he said, if my people should call by my name, humble themselves and pray, I'm going to seek my face, seek the mind of God, seek the, the, the thinking of God. That's what he's talking about, seek the consciousness. The spirit of God and turn from their wicked way. He's out here in heaven. Forgive their sin, our heal the land. We talk about we want healing, but we need to seek to God's face. Glory to God. To seek his face. And understand that it's, it's the Lord. The earth is the Lord. And the fullness of the earth, and the world and they that dwell in. Glory to God. Let's pray. We'll get right into some scriptures tonight. I want to encourage you. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. I'm telling you, I'm just believing the Lord for an outpour. Come expecting it. Believe in God for it. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. We glorify you. For opportunity just to share a word of life to those who are listening, those who are tied in, those who are tied in later. God, but I'm thanking you because your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the body of sun, though. soul and spirit, marrow the bone. Hallelujah. It's quick. It gives life. And so I thank you right now. Restore. Restore, God. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Oh, what a love of God that we have. God loves us. He loves you so much. God, I think it was the Lord that told Jeremiah, hallelujah. He said, listen, he said, I, I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. That's what he told, he told Jeremiah to tell Israel. And I made that promise still unto us. Because they called thee an outcast. Saying, this is I whom no man seek after. I want to share with you as we close out this year and embrace and do. Sometimes we write people off, but we don't know God's plan and divine purpose for them. So we must believe God. Believe God for that purpose, for, the, for, for his will will be done in our lives. And we're praying for the Thomas family. And not only the Napa family, we're praying for those families who've lost. Not only a young son, but a young daughter on this end was lost. The balance. But we know God is still the God of all the earth. And like Abraham, when he was struggling, thinking that his time had passed, that Sarah would, win, and would I ever be able to bring forth the promise of God. But the angel asked him, is there anything? hard for God. And my answer is no. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. We just got to believe him. That's why Jesus said, you can have faith, but the size of a mustard seed. You can say to this mouth, be thou removed, be thou cast into the midst of the sea, and it shall obey. Glory to God. So 
to anchor ourselves in the word of faith, believing God, and committing it, amen, to have a strong commitment to the things of God, believing God, to save our children, hallelujah, not just have them in church, but we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, God wants to fill us, anoint us, fresh oil of anointing, and Paul prays to the church in Ephesus, when he writes to the letter to the church, he reminds the Gentiles, reminds you, they but one body, they but one Lord, they but one faith, they but one baptism. But in the third, third chapter, he, he reminds them how they going to work together. He reminds us of the Spirit of God that works in us through love. Using that in the 16th verse of chapter 3. Listen to this prayer he prayed. He said that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. The riches of his glory. The riches of his glory. Oh, wow, man. He talking about it. The riches of God's love. God so loved the world that he gave. He so loved that he was moved to give his only begotten son. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The saints, when you recognize who you are, you are now sons of God. Now we're children of God. We're heirs of God. Join us with Christ. So be that we suffer with him, we should range with I want to encourage you tonight to understand who you are. Stand firm. Make that, make that total commitment. This is the year of overflow. This is the year of fresh oil. This is what Paul says unto the church in Rome, I think chapter 9. This is what he said. But he said, this is the word of promise. At this time, I will come to Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. But the children being not yet born, neither done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand. Not of works, but of him that called it. God that called it. You know, not of works. This is a faith walk. This is a grace walk. That's what this is. Even before Jacob and, and Esau were born. God had already had a divine purpose. Even before Isaac came, divine purpose. God has a purpose for every person. And I'm praying that God will wake the consciousness of man. And all of our young people and our seniors and everybody, that we will understand that God, that breath in us, belong to the Lord. God is our life and our salvation. And the Lord is the hope of glory. That's who he is. Christ in you. The Bible says this in first in John's Gospel, chapter one. The Bible says it talks about uh, in verse nine, that was a true light. Which which lighted every man come into the world. You're talking about the riches. Woman. God put God put something in every man. That light in us. That, and, and, and I pray that God would just touch the consciousness of us. That we would turn that light back on. And allow God to speak to us. That we'd be unctioned and led by the Spirit of God. And not by the things of this flesh. He was in the world. The world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came into his own. And his own received him. But as many as received them, hallelujah, to them gave he power, the right to become sons of God. Not only that, but even to them that believe on his name, what an awesome God we serve. Which were born not of the blood or the, or the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. God desired no man to be lost. No one. You talking about the riches of God. 
grant us his riches with a love that he asked for us. And so he desired that we would love one another. Notice, notice in the fourth chapter of John, verse 14, when there's a hunger for God, when there's a desire to please him, so this is what he says to us. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I should give him shall never thirst. When you have a desire for God and the things of God, he'll quench your thirst. But the water I should give him shall be in him. The will of water springing up unto everlasting life. He's talking to the woman in the well. I want you to know something. You got a thirst for me. A thirst for, for what I want to give you. I want to pour into you this life. And I believe God's going to feel desires of the heart of those who seek after him. The one of Jeremiah talks about when you, should, when you search for him, you shall find him. When you search for him with all your heart. God, I believe this is the year that we give all to God. All, all. Having that recommitment. Following through. Notice, notice what he says in, in John 6. Just in case somebody's struggling about well, will the Lord accept me or not. I, Pastor, you're going to know I, I've done something. <laughs> Let me give you a word. I've got a word for you. Look what he said. In John uh, chapter 6. Jesus said in verse 35. You said to him, I am the bread of life. Now, I want to give you water. I'm the bread. I'm the, I'm the sustainer. The one of the songs said, he satisfies the longing soul. And fill the hungry soul with goodness. He said, I'm the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. That's what Jesus said. Let me read on. Got something for you. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. He says, some of you have seen me, but you still don't believe. How much more God will have to do for us for we believe him? For all that the Father give me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. But you come to him, he don't, he's not going to turn you away. God don't turn you away. Men will write you off. People will write you off. Circumstances may write you off. But when you come to Jesus, how do you come? Because the Father draws you. When he put it in your spirit, when he put a thought in your mind, that's God talking to you. Maybe through a song, maybe through just a word or, or encouragement. That's God drawing you to him. He said, through love and kindness have I drawn you. That's riches. Something we don't deserve. But I want to encourage you tonight. Get ready for an overflow. But let's position our consciousness, our mind. You don't have to work for it. But you can believe God. But the Bible said that the promise of Abraham Come on the Gentiles through faith. And that is the promise of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 3, I think, verse 14. Let me, let me read that something else to you. That's something else to you. In John 7. I think, it's, I think it's John 7. Read this to you. Jesus saw one day he was teaching. And they were having feasts. The Jews always having different feasts. One where they were pour the water out. Jesus saw it. And then he says this. What the man of saying is this. He said, You seek me, shall not find me. And, and I'm, in, I'm in 36 verse. Then, where I am, that you cannot go. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. I satisfy. Satisfy that inner hunger. Satisfy that desire. 
satisfy that longing in your soul. Only God can satisfy. Don't care what you try. Nothing can satisfy but God. But God created you that way. He created all of us that way. And he's the only one who can satisfy that longing down in our spirit, in our soul. He said, he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What he said, he talking about riches. But this spake he of the spirit, who they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. But Jesus has been glorified. And so it's an open door where the Bible has come boldly to the throne of grace, that you may receive grace to help time of need. So receive the Spirit of God. Be refilled over and over again. Hallelujah. I think it's in uh, Acts chapter 3. After Peter and John went into the temple, Pray. Go into the temple and meet the man that was over age of 40 begging for arms. Peter set his eyes on him. Seven gold have I none. But such as I have, I give out unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of now rise up and walk. People were questioning him. This man leaped up, ran into the temple, praising God. We ought to be like that man. What a leap up out of this fleshly mindset. Leap up out of all this craziness going on. Leap up. Run into the presence of God. Rejoicing. Believe in God. Overflow. He's just saying, look at the 16 verse. He's just saying, what shall we do? Today? Indeed, no more miracle has been done. Well, that's, that's four. I'm going to get to 16, 3, 16. His name through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, they knew the man. They knew him. The faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. I tell you what the richness of God gives perfect soundness. But look at but look at the 19th verse. He said, Repent ye, he told Israel. Those who were listening. He said, turn from this fleshly concept. Turn from this law. Turn, turn to the grace and the faith that's in Jesus Christ. He said, turn to it. That's what he said. Turn away. But not by works. No. Not by your works. It's by faith. I work to prove my faith. But my faith show God. Justifies by faith. That we have peace with God. And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you gain the peace of Him. Glory to God. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. Your unbelief, he said, when the time of refreshing shall come with the presence of the Lord. I believe it's refreshing time. I believe it's a time for the church to get refreshed. We've come through these years. We've gone back into the sanctuary. But we can't come back in as usual anymore. This is a new year. Let's leave the old stuff behind. It's time for refreshing. Come expecting refreshing. Come expecting. Believe in God. Notice, notice something. Even in Exodus 15, this is what God says in Old Testament. When, to, when he was talking to Moses and children of Israel, he said, and he said, if thou wilt diligent hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, it's right to seek him, and will give ear to his commandments, keep his stature, I will put none disease upon thee, they said, which I have brought upon the Israel, for I am the Lord that healed thee. He said, I'm the Lord that healed thee. He said, yeah, that's Old Testament, Bishop. Pastor, that's Old Testament. Let me show you a New Testament now. Oh, here you go. I want to leave you in there. Let me show you a New Testament. Go to John 14. Let me show you something. Oh, here you go. Hallelujah. Oh, here you go. Let me start around the 13th verse. Look what he says. Whatsoever you shall ask in, 
in my name, Jesus said, that will I do. That the Father will be glorified in the Son. You should ask anything in my name. He said, I will do it. If you love me, <laughs> you love me. He said, keep my commandments. I will pray the Father, and he should give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. When you get filled, God abides with you. And forever, we just have to refresh him, refresh our consciousness. Let him rise up in us again. We need refreshing. Even the spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive, because they see him not, neither know him. But ye know him, for he dwell with you, shall be in you, Jesus tell him. He said, I'm with you, but I'm going to be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I want you to know, no matter what you're going through, he's a comforter. He comforts. He's, he's satisfied. He smooths the consciousness. He gives joy. That's what he does. Give peace. But we have to trust him. And just believe God. It's going to bring you out of it. Sometimes we struggle with different things. We struggle with this. We struggle with situation. We struggle financially. We struggle with all kinds of struggle. Many are struggling. I want you to know God is still present. He's a very present help in time of need and trouble. Let me read on. Yet a little while, the world sees me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. That's what he told him. And that, that promises to us. He was still on earth, but he told him, I'm leaving. But as I live, you shall live also. And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father. Ye in me, and I in you. Glory. He said, I'm in the Father. Ye in me, and I in you. Glory to God. What a guarantee. What a rich. We're talking about riches. Guarantee. He that has my commandment, keep them. He it is that loveth me. He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. I will love him and, I, and will manifest myself to him. I tell you, when you love the Lord, God manifests himself to us. I'm talking about riches. And Jesus said unto him, Not as carry, for how is it that thou, Judas said to him, I tell you, not Judas is carry, the other. How is it that thou manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Now, that's what Jesus answered and said unto him. If a man love me, that mean mankind, if he love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him, make our board with him. In other words, we're going to abide in my habitation. We're going to live in him. We're going to stay with him. All the promises of God in him is yea and amen. Hallelujah. When you get, you give your heart to the Lord, when you believe on him, you accept his plan of salvation. Glory to God. Faith move. That's not works, that's faith. That's why when the writer says in Colossians, I think, 3 and 17, what shall we do in word and deed? Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Acts 4 and 12. Is neither salvation nor other. And there's no other name given among them. Well, we must be saved. Glory. Philippians 2. I think 9, 10, 11 talks about it. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. We talk about riches. Man, everything in heaven and earth and under the earth. Glory to God. There's no other name that the God has given among us. So that's in that name is refreshing. Come expect it. Look at what Jesus said. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. 
And the words which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Glory to God. You want to know what love is? Love is keeping the word. That's what true love is. I mean, folk can say I love you. But if you mistreat me, how can you love me? That's what the Bible says, love you one another. As I have loved you. Let me go back to Ephesians. Let me wrap this up. I want to encourage you. Read this day. I tell you, I'm expecting God. God wants to be strengthening the inner man. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints, not some, but all. Not pick and choose, but all. Not your little clique, but all. God wants to comprehend with all saints. What is the breadth, length, and depth, and height of that love? Not pick and choose. Well, this is my friend. Well, that's my friend. But I will not die. No, God wants to show the love to all. All the men will know how men should know you, my disciple, by your love one to one another. To know the love of Christ, it passes knowledge. I want to know that love that the natural mind can't comprehend. I want to know that love. Oh, that the flesh man, the natural man, the common man can't even grasp it. Only in the spirit. That we might be filled with all the fullness of God. And Christ is the fullness of the Godhead body. That's the fullness of God. I want to be full up with Christ. Full up with God. Hallelujah. Then he said this. In the 20th verse. He said now unto him. That is able to do it. Seasonally and abundantly. Of all that we ask of faith. According to the power. Working at us. He said, Paul said, even you talking about the devil. Oh, the mention of his love. He said, he can do more than that. We can't even think. We don't have the mind to think like that. But he wants to do exceeding abundance. All we're able to ask of him. According to his love. He said, how are you going to do it, Bishop? How is it going to happen? I'll tell you how it's going to happen. Zachariah the prophet tell us. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. The Hallelujah. Glory to God. And by my spirit, this is what Paul said in, in Romans 8. I'm, I'm close to because I want you to come. I want you to come. Bring somebody. So tell them, let's go. Let's come to the house of God. Let's go back to the house of God. Let's go back to the throne of grace. Let's go back to the altar. Kneel before the God our God and believe in the Lord. Hallelujah. He's going to lift the burden off of our community. Lift the burden. And then lift it off of the shoulders. Isaiah said. And the yoke it shall be destroyed. Why? Because of the anointing. Isaiah 10, verse 27. I believe there's an anointing that God has placed in the believer. When you feel with the Holy Spirit, Oh, filled with the Holy Spirit, there's an anointing that abides with you forever. Glory to God. And I believe God is, I believe God. Gonna do just what He said. You got to trust and obey, but no other way. I believe. I believe God. How you gonna do it, Bishop? Look at Romans. Um, look at Romans 8 and 9. I'll start with 9. First. I'll start with the eighth verse. He says, so then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Why? For God is a spirit. God is not flesh and bone. It's a spirit. And they that worship and worship him in spirit and in truth. But he is not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you, if any man have not the spirit of God, Christ, he is none of his. God identified you through the spirit of Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Christ in you. And if 
Christ be in you. <laughs> the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is light because of righteousness. Because he is the Lord our righteousness. Jeremiah 23 says, He is the Lord our righteousness. He is righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, if you, if you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, saints don't lose heart. But pray for those. Get refreshed. And pray for those that they will be filled. I'm praying on this year. I'm not praying for material stuff. I'm praying for the outpouring of God's refreshment. The outpouring of God's anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if I can get a witness tonight, sit up outside. Hallelujah. Let me know you're praying for the outpouring. Our sons and our daughters, our homes, our children, our community. We need an outpouring of God's spirit. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Glory to God. That's what I'm praying for. I'm praying for refreshing of his Holy Spirit. I'm praying for fresh anointing to fall on the household of faith. All the saints of God. That we, we don't argue and fuss among them. We don't back by anymore. We, we, we lift each other up. And we ain't got but one father. One. So the prophet said, why do we talk so treacherously about one another? We ain't got but one God. He's the father of all. Through all, above all, through all. In you all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Let's seek him while he can be found. Let's call upon him while he's near. Glory to God. Therefore, brethren, we are dead as not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, we shall live. We bring these things under subjection. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hallelujah. So I pray tonight. Pray that the Spirit of God will go and come in your home. I pray for the anointing will just flow in that bedroom. Touch that sick body. That hospital room. Touch that body. Glory to God. And for those, amen, who, who are dealing with those type of issues. This is my prayer for you. Colossians 4. Look around. Verse 12. He may stand perfect and complete, fully assured in all the will of God. That's what I, I pray that we stand perfect and complete, fully assured in all the will of God. And be not tossed to and fro with every little thing coming on. But we stand firm on the word of faith. As we continue. Move away from the hope of the gospel. That Christ is our hope. Our eternal life. He said, I pray that you come to know the one eternal God. Jesus Christ whom he said. And he goes on to say, Father, I pray that you make them one. Even as we are one. God wants us to be one in the spirit. Come in agreement to him. While we are on this earth. Come in agreement. One day he'll change the vital body. It's incorruptible. But put on incorruption. And his model shall put on immortality. And brought the pastor saying, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy fruit? Hallelujah. Oh really God. But I want to tell you, one day, he's coming back for a church. And a spot of wrinkle. Hallelujah. Great ways I preach. Sting of death, sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Saint, let's be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. Let us 
much as you know your labor is not in vain. And I know sometimes we say the work is doing all the Jesus said what the true work is. He said that in John 6 29. The work is to believe on him whom he has sent. Whatever you do, don't lose your faith in Jesus Christ. Anchor your faith in him. He'll direct your path. But the sons are led by his spirit. Hallelujah. And it's the spirit that bear witness that we are children of God. And the majority of heirs of God. The majority of heirs of Christ. So I pray that we grow in width, depth, length, depth, and height, full dimension of God's love. That we come to understand that He can do sin abundantly of all that we ask of faith according to the power that worketh in us. So I'm praying for refreshing that we allow the power of God to flow through us on this coming year as we close out this year from His greatness and His graciousness. Hallelujah. And His graciousness that He's shown unto us. God bless you tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for your people. I pray for all saints around the world. I pray for the saints of Pray that the body become one again. That we are not tossed to and fro with them. But we pray for each other. We lay aside issues. And that we will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. I pray for the Fuellas. Pray for the Staley. Pray for the house. I pray for all the saints who are struggling. Those who've lost loved ones, Mother Joan, the Thomas family. All the other families praying for them. Because I know you're able to do exceeding in abundance all that we're able to ask of them. I thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Help us, Lord, to love one another as you have loved us. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hope to see you on New Year's Eve night. And remember, that is our morning worship service. Have service that Sunday morning. Amen. So we want to bring in the year under the power of God's anointing. Not just have church as usual. I just believe in God for an outpouring. Glory to God. Pray with me on that. Pray with me that the God will send a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Have a blessed night. Be safe. Hope to see you on New Year's Eve. We are serving again at 1030 and we are going live. Praise it for those who can't come. But if you can come, don't sit home. Hallelujah. Come join us. We will bow on our knees before the Lord. I believe in God. That there will be an outpouring like never before in our midst. In Jesus' name. God bless you.